third lightning strike. That's rainy season in Panama, baby. Car alarms going off and everything. So don't let anybody tell y'all, including me, that it's all sunshine and rainbows in Panama. There are some negatives of living here. Now I debated when uh, making this video whether to entitle this the negatives of living in Panama or just 15 annoying things about living in Panama. But I mean, a lot of people would say that annoying things are negatives, right? So, you know, let's get into it. So number 15, the number 15 most negative thing about living in Panama is the infrastructure. Now you could say the infrastructure is also a positive. Panama is a developing nation. It's not a first world country, but it is a developing country. So when you compare it to other developing countries, you know, the infrastructure is actually very good. It would be considered a positive. Um, but when you're coming from the U.S., Canada, or Europe, you're going to see some things and maybe see the infrastructure as a negative. So one big thing that you're going to encounter here is the potholes. Um, you see quite a bit of those. Um, and it's been so bad that people, you got that graphic there with Bugs Bunny there. There's like a K.I. de Nuevo Viejo, basically meaning like, oh, it's supposed to be new, but it's old. Like that's basically a new road on that graphic, but it still has a pothole on it. And people took to Twitter about it that it was so bad. So you are going to see some potholes. The situation with the roads here in Panama um, as we mentioned to you in previous videos, is that most of the main roads are going to be good, well paved, but you're going to see some random potholes. The secondary roads are going to be paved most of the time. When you turn off of those secondary roads now, you're going to be almost always on a dirt road or a rock road. Uh, so there's that. Then when you look at a lot of the buildings, you know, there are some decaying buildings in some areas. Definitely some areas at least need a coat of paint or something on it. And it's um, interesting when you look at it. Um, that the infrastructure needs some improvement. Panama is working on that as uh, we're finding out here through some of our research for the NAP sessions, the news around Panama, that they are investing in their infrastructure. So that is a good thing. The number 14 negative about living in Panama is the uneven distribution of wealth. And this is kind of piggybacking onto the infrastructure, um, the infrastructure item that I just mentioned. Uh, because you do see some decaying buildings and things like that. And this is more evident really in areas where black people live. You got El Chirillo, which is a neighborhood right next to Casco Viejo, which is a very, very popular tourist area that all of the buildings are being renovated and made to be beautiful and everything. And then one or two blocks from Casco Viejo, you walk into the hood in El Chirillo and it's just like, you know, and you got places like uh, parts of Karundu um, in the city. And, and much of the city of Cologne uh, has decaying structure, you know, as you can see here in this video. Now, if you ask me, there is no excuse for that for Panama. Panama has a lot of income that they're getting four point, I mean, four billion dollars of revenue a year now from this uh, Panama Canal. You're getting uh, revenue from the free trade zone, second largest free trade zone in the world. We're sitting up here looking at all of these infrastructure projects and economy boosting projects that they're working on, like I said, through research for these nap session videos, I'm seeing Panama literally is spending like billions. Um, so you can't tell me that some of this money can't go toward improving these areas. And even the World Bank, which says that Panama's economy is slated to grow at 5.7% in 2023, which is very good compared to other Latin American countries. Even they say Panama's uh, economy could be better if they account for the inequalities that there are with women, Afro descendants, and the indigenous peoples. So it is something that Panama, I think, is working on, but they need to bring more to the forefront. Um, so number 13 on the negatives about living in Panama are the insects and the pests. Um, so it is the tropics. So you can pretty much imagine any insect that you might see in the States. Um, you may see some the same size, but you're going to see some bigger, you know, because it's the tropics. They're just bigger. So you can expect to see that. The main three that we see in our area here are fire ants, <clears throat> um, mosquitoes, and also cheetras. Cheetras are sand flies. Another name for them is noceums because they're really super small. And if you're not looking, you can't see them. They call them noceums, but they have a very powerful bite that's about 10 times more painful than a mosquito bite. 
and the swelling is worse than a mosquito bite and that swelling can stay with you for basically up to two weeks 12 days to two weeks and it's going to itch like crazy um, so I've seen some people on these shows like Naked and Afraid, big tough people, some military people, a lot of survival training, you know, they can build shelter, they can hunt, they can do all of this stuff. But I've seen people on that show, get those che those cheaters get a hold to them and they got to check out and go home on like day two or whatever because they got like a thousand cheater bites and they couldn't handle these bugs. So that's one thing you have to look out for, especially if you're on the Caribbean side in Bocas del Toro in particular. You do have some on the Pacific side, but just need to be aware to try to not be out on the beach at dawn or uh, dusk is when they're kind of most apparent. As far as other pests, um, you're going to see here in Panama, particularly if you live in a home, you're going to see some scorpions, snakes, you know, geckos, which geckos we see even in this high rise condo, you know, way up, you know, of course they climb, they can climb walls and stuff. So you see some of them uh, up this high. They're actually good though. They kill bugs, but it still may be annoying and uncomforting for some people to see the geckos. Um, and also, if you're on the ground in a home, you're going to see a lot of toads. So here's a, an, an encounter that we had with a toad. Yet another close animal encounter in Panama. Let's see if we can get him to move. Oop, there you go. So the long story short of that, if you want to have less encounters with these kinds of larger pests, then you probably should opt to stay in a condo versus a home. Number 12, the number 12 negative thing about living in Panama, and I really debated about putting this on the list as a negative because it is a Spanish speaking country, is the language barrier. So you do really need to learn some Spanish if you're going to make your experience the best that it could possibly be here. Uh, you can get by without it, but you know, it's not going to be a great experience for you. For a lot of things that you need to get done, you're definitely going to have to get what we would call maybe a handler, somebody that can help you get your driver's license, um, somebody maybe going to help you go to some of these government offices and things like that that can operate on your behalf uh, due to the language barrier. The other thing with that is that Panamanians speak very, very fast. And they also truncate and abbreviate words. So it's not the best country to be trying to learn Spanish. You learn in Spanish because um, it's kind of hard to hear them a lot of times. When my wife and I went to Costa Rica, you know, you go to check in and the guy's like, Buenos dias, senor. Como estan? Todo bien? And I was like, wow, you know, this dude's enunciating. He's speaking slow. You know, we look at each other like, hey, like we can understand everything they're saying, you know. But in Panama, no. They're going, you know, it's going to be a lot faster. And you're going to have to really, really focus to catch on or just, you know, ask them to speak slower. You know, hablo me más despacio, por favor, uh, so that you can catch what's going on. But the language barrier is definitely going to be an issue for you at some point. <clears throat> so, number 11. The number 11 negative thing about living in Panama is the noise. So, Panamanians are very hardworking people. Um, a lot of them do still work on Saturday. Sunday is pretty much a day off for everyone. So, they're going to be at the beach kicking it. You know, if they're in the city, they're going to be kicking it Saturday night after they get off. Um, and like I said, they love, love some fireworks. So there's nothing for you to be, just be sitting up in your living room and, you know, it may be 12, 1230 at night or whatever. And then so the noise is something that you have to prepare yourself for, particularly on Sundays. Um, like I said, out here on the beach. A lot of people, they're going to be out here kicking it on the beach. I mean, they playing music. I mean, they are bumping like, I mean, I grew up in the hood. Some of my cousins had some, you know, booming systems in their cars. You know, like, I've heard a lot of stuff. But what these people have is unbelievable. Like, you can hear this stuff from like, you know, 18, 20 floors up. Like, it's right outside your window. Some of it doesn't bother me because I actually like the music. But some days, it just depends on the day. Some days, they're going to go all day. I mean, they're going to be out there like 7 o'clock. 6 45 a.m all day long so just be aware that that's a negative at times it's going to be the noise so the number 10 negative about living in panama is the weather now the weather is another one just like the infrastructure that is also a positive of course we know it's warm it's the tropics so the weather is a good thing but the weather can also be a negative because you do have a rainy season in which it's going to pretty much rain every day or every other day um, you just kind of have to work around it 
It may rain some in the afternoon for a little while and stop. So it's not so bad, especially out here in the beach area. They call this area here Arco Seco, which is dry art. It is basically the driest area of the country. <clears throat> so if you want less rain, you can live out near the beach areas, Coronado and Gorgona. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be impacted somewhat by the weather sometimes. Number nine. The number nine negative about living in Panama are the early sunsets. What I would call the early sunsets. Now, what my wife Shanae would call short days. Well, they're actually not short days. I mean, the days are still, you know, 11 and a half, 12 hour days. It's just the sun comes up early, but it also sets very early. Panama is only eight degrees above the equator, so you don't have a lot of uh, day night fluctuation like you do in the states. They just say like in the winter months in the states the sun may be going down you know 4 35 o'clock it's getting dark in the winter time in the summertime you know it may be still light outside quarter to nine nine o'clock maybe you know a little after nine o'clock so for some people that is an annoying thing or a negative because you're thinking about when you back home in the summertime you still out kicking it at 8 8 39 o'clock it's just getting dark but here most of the time it's going to be dark or getting dark say between 6 45 and 7 15 and it gives you a feeling by the time it hits like 9 o'clock or 9 30 for some people they feel like it's 11 30 or midnight just you know just mentally and just from seeing that light uh, go away so quickly so that is an issue for some people um, but the days are pretty much standard it only varies about a half an hour depending upon which uh, time of the year it is. So the number eight negative of living in Panama are the police checkpoints. There are a lot of police checkpoints in Panama. It's very random. They can just throw one up. Normally they'll do it on the weekend. Definitely on these holiday weekends they'll put up a lot more checkpoints but it's completely random and all they're checking for is that you have a license as a valid driver's license. Um, so usually I may get stopped. It's like 50-50 you know, sometimes they may ask for it. A lot of times they just, you know, just wave me on through about half of the time. But it's something you need to be aware of if you plan on staying in Panama on your tourist visa for an extended period of time because your driver's license, remember, is only good for 90 days. If you're from the U.S. or Canada, your tourist visa is good for 180 days, but your license is not. So, um, you know, that's something that you're really going to have to keep in mind and make sure you just keep a 20 in your passport. Um, so that you can hand that to them, you know, when they ask. And um, in most cases, that's going to that's gonna pretty much get the job done as far as you avoiding any kind of ticket or any kind of an issue uh, with the police. But there are many checkpoints and they are random, so be aware of that. The number seven negative of living in Panama is paying bills in person. Not just in person, but in cash. Like, I had to go pay it in person. I can't even pull out a credit card and pay it. I got to roll up here and pay this thing in cash. So here's our first experience with that when we got to Panama. Okay, y'all, we are in Panama paying the first uh, internet bill. Got to come here into the grocery store, which is El Rey. Got to come to this window right here and fill out this form right here with the invoice number and all of that. Similar to what you see here, go to this window, make the payment, and get that receipt right there. So Now, I made that payment when we had Tigo Internet, but we've since switched over to MassMobile, who has a fiber optic plan, um, 1,000 megabits per second. It's like $36 a month for the first year, and then $44 a month after that is great, because, you know, my plan, Internet plan in the States, is like over 100 bucks, like $105 or something a month, and this Internet is better. But anyway, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Mass Mobile has an app, so I can pay the cell phone bills online. I can pay the internet bill online. I no longer have to do that with Tigo, but I do still have to go to the store to pay the electric bill, and the company is Natrogy. Um, it's the company in Panama, so that's something that can be annoying for you. Um, <clears throat> Panama does have some antiquated processes um, that they need to work on, and that's one of them. So, the number six negative of living in Panama are the power and water outages. So we have something to share with you on that. Check it out. Okay, so you hear a lot about power outages in Panama. There are power outages. 
um, in Panama, but if you live in one of these high-rise condos, almost all of them uh, have a generator that kicks in when the power goes out uh, within about three to five seconds. So um, they just so happen to have the door open, so I figured we may as well get a quick video and take a look at ours here. So check it out. So as you can see from that, generally if you live in one of these high-rise condos, they will have a backup generator um, that kicks on almost immediately. A lot of these high-rise condos also have a large supply of 50, 60,000 gallons of water um, available if necessary. Uh, so if you are going to live in a home, if you're going to rent a home or if you're going to buy a home, you need to make sure you have a water tank and a generator. Um, you know, to help alleviate your concerns with this because otherwise you may have to endure seven, eight, nine hours, you know, with no power or no water from time to time. And this is something that may happen like, I just say once every few weeks, you know, sometimes it's a little more often than that uh, where the power may go out. But, um, or if the water company is doing some kind of work where they shut the water down or they say water is going to be limited, but that's just something to be aware of. And again, it's going to be less of a concern for you if you live in a condo versus a house. Okay, the number five negative of living in Panama is customer service. Everything is slow in Panama, tranquilo. The people, you know, really nice people, very laid back. Um, they love and value spending time with their friends and family. So for example, if you're out at a restaurant, you know, their mentality is that, hey, I'm not gonna bother you if you need something, you'll let me know. So, you know, in the States, it may be, you know, somewhat offensive for you to be like, hey, you know, you wave somebody over. Um, but here is, is, is not a thing at all, not a big thing at all. Um, <clears throat> but they aren't going to bother you. So they are going to be ex extended periods of time. You're going to look around and be like, where's the waiter? Where's the waitress? And things like that. Um, so we're going to perceive that as bad customer service. And you can say it is, but in that case, it's more of a cultural thing. Um, Panamanians generally are going to be late. They are tardy. Sometimes they may not show up at all. Um, and again, it's because they value the time that they spend with their friends and family. Uh, so if they're in the middle of something with them and they're having a good time, they just may blow off the appointment or just may choose to be late. And that's just the way it is. So that's one thing that you can, ha can expect if you move here. You can expect to be waiting in lines. Things that in your mind should not take that long. You know, anytime you go to the bank, especially if you go to the um, migration office, you're getting your residency cards and things like that. At least you aren't standing in a line there. They have chairs, but you are going to be waiting for a while. Okay, y'all. So I'm in line right now waiting to get um, the Panapass. My car has a Panapass. Panapass is basically like the... Um, it's like a transponder thing that you use to go through some tolls and stuff like that. It's already installed here on my car right there. But it's in the previous owner's name, information, account, and all that stuff. So I got to get that changed over. So I got to wait in this long line of cars to get this thing changed over to me. So that's just something you just have to wrap your mind around and try to have some patience if you're going to live in Panama. So number four, the number four negative of living in Panama is the burning of trash in the fields. Now here in Panama, they'll tell you that hey, some of these are actually controlled burns. But no, nah, I mean, half of the time you look at it, you're like, this does not look controlled at all. This looks out of control. So check this one out. Here in Panama, you'll constantly see people burning grass, burning fields see up here they got the fire department out here trying to control this fire right here on um, barrels so the burning of fields and trash is something that can be annoying you know it's nothing for you to look out and see you know smoke in several different locations um, where people are burning their trash or they're instead of cutting 
this high brush down they just burn it down so that can be somewhat annoying especially if it's close enough to you where you can smell that smoke very very annoying and very much a negative so number three the number three negative of living in Panama is the traffic the traffic the traffic the traffic <clears throat> so it's very common for you to see motorcycles here riding up in between cars it could be on the highway it could be in the city you know where there's the space is even tighter and I'm scared to death that I'm gonna hit one of these people these day one of these days because you know they're getting your blind spot you can't see them you're trying to make a move trying to you know cut over to the next lane or something like that and you don't see them uh, so far it hasn't happened but they do a lot of that it's nothing for them to ride on the shoulder they'll ride on the shoulder all day every day on the highway I did actually see the police stop somebody and give them a ticket for it which kind of surprised me um, you're gonna very rarely see a signal turn signal and they will cut you off um, so they, they will cut you off so you just got to be on your toes about that <clears throat> for me one of the most annoying things is that when when they turn for some reason a lot of Panamanians will turn very slow so let's just say that you're making a left turn there's a car in front of you is making a left you see the oncoming traffic you're like oh yeah we got plenty of time for both of us to make this turn that car goes to make the turn you following close behind them but they going so doggone slow, turning so slow, the oncoming traffic is barreling down on you and you like, go, you know what I mean? Like, it's unbelievable to me. Like, I don't understand. Like, there will be nothing in front of them. Like, nothing in front of them and they still going to turn very slowly. So, for me, that's one that's really annoying. Also, it's just completely zero to 100 in terms of how people drive. They either drive like super fast or some people just drive super slow so traffic is definitely an issue the number two negative about living in Panama is the trash and this is one that's really really disappointing you know for me because you look at Panama you be like man it's such a beautiful country why are they destroying the country with the trash so it's nothing for you to be driving along, everything's good or whatever, and you just look over there and you're like, big pile of trash on the side of the road, you know. Um, they do have these areas where, well, they do have regular rest stops like you have in the States with big gas stations and stuff like that, but they do have a lot of areas where it's just like a little bit of a turnoff. It's like a curve. You, you get it, come off the highway, it's like a little rest area. You can get out the car, stretch your legs and things like that. Almost all of those areas will have a big, huge pile of trash. And it's just like, you know, I don't get it. Then when you look in the, you know, the Bay of Panama, you're crossing a bridge from Panama City into Panama Oeste. Um, a lot of times you can look off and see like a lot of trash and plastic or whatever in the water up along the shoreline. And it's just like, it's just so, it's just so ugly and it's just disappointing. So hopefully Panama is going to do something about that. But that's definitely a negative for sure. And here we go, y'all. We made it to number one. What do y'all think it is? The number one negative about living in Panama is the traffic. So I know y'all like, hold up, Lonzo. You said traffic was number three. How can it be number three and number one? Well, I'm telling y'all right now. If we wanted to make this list, traffic could be number one, number three, number five. No, it, traffic could appear on here like six or seven times because A, that's how bad it is. And B, you know, there's different aspects of, of traffic. So what I talked about a lot more in number three is like how people drive, you know, their habits when driving is not necessarily what we used to in terms of like the rules of the road. So, I mean, to separate this out a little bit, number one is just mostly about the sheer volume of traffic at times. So there's only 4.5 million people that live in Panama, but about 1.4 million of those live in the city. So you had like about a third, a little less than a third of the people in the whole country live in Panama City. So yeah, the traffic can get very, very bad there. And so here's one instance of that and we want y'all to check out. So there y'all go. Traffic coming out of Panama City just crossed the Bridge of the Americas. You see they got traffic flowing same direction. Um, so basically they flipped the traffic that's supposed to be inbound into the city to make it go outbound, which they do pretty much every day during rush hour because that's how bad the traffic can be so it's gonna be a long trip back home 
So you don't see a lot of issues with traffic outside of the city unless it's on the weekend or a holiday weekend. Most of the people leaving the city are coming out toward the beaches. So you will see a lot of traffic during those times. Friday afternoons, Sunday afternoons, people are going back toward the city. You'll see a lot of traffic. Uh, so if you are in the city, you just want to give yourself extra time to get wherever it is you're going. If you have not used Waze, you need to download it. Waze is your friend. You need to utilize that because it's going to tell you if there are delays in traffic. Um, and it's completely random at times. I mean, the rush hour seems to start a little earlier here, like as early as like 2. I mean, in traffic jams are like 2 and 1.30 and stuff like that. And you're like, it shouldn't even be rush hour yet. So it's completely random as to when you can get in a traffic jam. So you definitely want to use an app like Waze. Um, which leads me to honorable mention. So I got a couple more that I didn't put on the list, but they honorable mention negatives. And one of those is that there are no physical addresses in Panama. So that's another reason why you definitely need an app like Waze to help you get where you're going. You know, because you know, when people give you directions in Panama, they'll be like, okay, like the corner of Calle 50, which is 50th Street, and some other street. And but you don't know exactly what building. You just get to that corner and it's like in that block somewhere. Okay, that's, that's the address. It's not like 1525 West 25th Street and you're just going down and looking at the numbers and be like, okay, yeah, this is it right here. No, that's not how it works here. So that is a negative. So when it comes to your mail, you need to set up an account with a place like Fastbox or Mailboxes, etc., who will give you a physical address in Miami to have your things mailed to. You can even order from Amazon. And those things will be flown down here and they'll be uh, out to your fast box or your mailboxes etc facility within an extra day or two than, than what you used to you didn't have to go get it so there's no more leave the house mosey on down the driveway to the mailbox get your mail now nah, that, that that's over with you gotta get in the car go get your mail so that can be a negative or annoying for some people probably could have made the top 15 but i just put it on here as honorable mention and also honorable mention i put on here well i just have to show you all this one one other annoying thing about living in Panama are the dogs. Not that they mean or anything, they're super nice and docile, but they will lay their behinds out in the middle of the road and dare you to hit them. Look at that. It's wild, man. Then you got this dude. He ain't gonna budge either. <laughs> it's crazy. So that wraps up the 15 negatives of living in Panama. Please do like, subscribe, leave a comment for us down below. Let us know what y'all think about these. You know, is it something that we miss? You know, for you folks that are already here or that have visited, is it something that we missed it that would go on the list? Is there some things that I have ranked too low that you would bump way, way up on the list? Uh, you know, let us know in the comments down below and we'll see you all on the next one.